Time for chapter eight of Bud Not Buddy by Christopher Paul Curtis. This is a really long chapter, so I'm going to do it in two videos. It's about 27 pages, so halfway through, I'll find a good spot to stop. Chapter eight, open your books to page 60. Make sure you're following along carefully while I read. Something stepped on a little stick. As soon as the twig cracked, my eyes snapped open and I was wide awake. I held my breath and kept as still as I could. Whatever it was that was sneaking up on me knew I'd woke up because it stopped moving and kept as still as it could too. Even though my head was still under my blanket, I could feel two eyes staring at me real hard and I knew these weren't critter eyes. These eyes made the hair on the back of my neck raise up the way only human being eyes can do. Top of 61. Without wiggling or jiggling around too much under my blanket, I got my fingers wrapped around my jackknife. Right when I was ready to push the covers off of me and start running or stabbing, whoever it was that had been watching jumped right on top of me. It was as trapped, I was as trapped as a roach under a dish rag. I tried to guess the ex exact spot that the person's heart was at, then pulled my knife back. A voice said, if you ain't kid called Bud from the home, I'm really sorry about jumping on you like this. It was bugs. When I tried to talk, it felt like I had to suck all the air out of Flint. I finally got breathing right and said, doggone it, bugs. It is me. You nearly scared me to death. He got off of me and I threw the blanket over to the side. You don't know how lucky you are. I was just about fixing to stab you in the heart. Bugs looked like he knew he just had a real close call. He said, I'm sorry, bud. I didn't mean to scare you, but everybody knows how you like to sleep with that knife open. So I figured I'd best grab hold of you so you wouldn't wake up slicing nobody. Shucks. Even though it was Bugs who'd come real close to getting his heart poked. I was the one who was still having trouble catching my breath. I asked, how come you aren't back at the home? But before he had a chance to answer, I knew, you're on the lam, top of page 62. Bug said, yep, I'm going back to ride the rails. When I heard about you beating that kid up so bad that you had to take off, I figured it was time for me to get going too. I thought you might be hanging around the library, so I come down to see if you wanted to go with me. Where are you headed? Heading. Mm, there's always fruit to be picked out west. I heard we can make enough money to get by out there. There's supposed to be a train leaving sometime tomorrow. Did you really beat that kid up in the foster home? I said, uh-huh, we had kind of had a fight. How long does it take to get out west? Bug said, depends on how many trains you got to hop. Was he really two years older than you? Uh-huh, he was 12. Is it fun to hop a train? Some of the time it is. Some of the time it's scary. We heard he was kind of big too, was he? I said, he was big. I can't see how we can hop on a train. They look like they're moving pretty doggone fast. Bug said, most times you don't hop them when they're going too fast, when they're going fast. Most time you try to climb on one while it's sitting in the train yard. Did the guy cry after you whipped him? Well, kind of. He looked real scared, then told his mama to keep away from me to keep away from him. They even said I was a hoodlum. Will we be sleeping on the train and everything? Top of 63. Sure we will. Some of the time the train don't stop for two or three days. Man, I always try to tell people that cause just cause because someone's skinny, it don't mean they can't fight. You're a hero now, bud. Nah, I didn't really do nothing much. Well, how about the toilet? How are we going to use the toilet if the train doesn't stop? Bug said, you just kind of lean out of the door and go. When the train is still moving? Yeah, you get a real nice breeze. Oh man, that sounds great. Count me in. I can't wait. Bugs spit a big glob of slob in his hand and, I, and said, I knew I could depend on you, bud. I spit a big glob in my hand and said, we're brothers forever, Bugs. We slapped our hands together as hard as we could and got our slobs mixed up real good, then waved them in the air so they'd dry. Now it was official. I finally had a brother. Bugs said, we'll go down to the mission. There's bound to be someone there that knows where we can hop this train. 
Then we'll be on the lam together. We found out that we'd have to go to a city called Hooperville, just outside of Flint. The only trouble was, top of 64, nobody knew exactly where Hooperville was. It was dark before we found, the right direction, found out the right direction. I'd never heard of a city that was so doggone hard to find. We walked on a trail through some woods that ran right up against Thread Creek. We could tell we were getting close to Hooperville because we heard somebody playing a mouth organ and the smell of food cooking was getting stronger. We kept walking in the direction that the sky was glowing with an orangish light. When we could hear the music real clear and folks talking to each other and the sound of sticks cracking in the fire, we started cutting through the trees. That way we could peek into Hooperville first. We looked up from behind a big tree and saw that a big wind or even two or three big wolves huffing and puffing real hard could blow Hooperville into the next county. It was a bunch of huts and shacks thrown together out of pieces of boxes and wood and cloth. The Amos's shed would have looked like a fancy house here. Right near our tree was the big fire that had been lighting up the sky. It looked like a hundred people were sitting around it, watching things burn or waiting for the food cooking in three big pots set up in the fire. There were two littler fires burning in Hooperville. One had a pot that was big enough to boil a whole person in it. A man was stirring things in the pot with a big stick, and when he raised the stick up, he'd pull some top of page 65 breeches or a shirt out and pass it over to a white man who was hanging the clothes on a line to dry. There was a mountain of clothes on the ground next to him, waiting their turn. The other fire in Hooperville was real small. It was off to the side, by itself. There were five white people sitting at this fire. Two kids, a man, and a woman holding a little wrapped up baby. The baby sounded like all those new sick babies at the home. It was coughing like it was a half-dead little animal. Bugs whispered, shoot, this ain't no city. This is just another cardboard jungle. A what? A cardboard jungle, somewhere you can get off the train and clean up and get something to eat without the cops chasing you out of town. I said, well, what are we going to do? We can't just go busting into the city and expect someone to feed us, can we? Bug said, one of us has got to talk to them. Let's flip for it. Okay. Bugs rumbled around in his pocket and found a penny. He rubbed it against his britches and said, Heads I win, tails you lose. Okay. He flipped the penny up into the air and caught it, then slapped it down the back of his hand, top of page 66. He peeked underneath his right hand to see, and a big smile cracked his face. Shucks. Bug said, tails you lose. Dang. So what should I say? Ask them if this is Hooperville. See if they got any extra food. I moved out from behind our tree and walked over to the biggest fire. I waited until some folks noticed me, then said, Excuse me, is this here Hooperville? The man who was playing the mouth organ stopped, and everyone else around the fire looked up at me. One of the white men said, What is it you are looking for? I said, A city called Hooperville, sir. They all laughed. The mouth organ man said, Nah, son, what you're looking for is Hooverville, with a V, like in President Herbert Hoover. I said, oh, is this it, sir? The man said, this is one of them. I said, one of them? He answered, they're all over the country. This here is the Flint version. And all of them are called Hooverville? That's right. Mr. Hoover worked so hard at making sure every city has got one that it seems like it would be criminal to call them anything else. Someone said, that's the truth, top of 67. I said, well, how are we going to know if we're in the right one? The mouth organ man said, are you hungry? Yes, sir. Are you tired? Yes, sir. Are you scared about what's going to happen tomorrow? I didn't want anything anyone to think I was a baby, so I said, not exactly scared, sir. Maybe I am a little bit nervous. The man smiled and said, well, son, any place where there are other folks in need of the same things that you are in is the right place to be. This is exactly the Hooverville you're looking for. 
I knew what the man was trying to say. This was the exact same kind of circle talking and cross talking that Mama used to do. Bugs hadn't had that kind of practice. He came from behind the tree and said, I don't get it. You said there were Hoovervilles all over the place. What if we was looking for the Hooverville in Detroit or Chicago? How could this be the right one to be in? The man said, you boys from Flint? I said, yes, sir. The man waved his mouth organ like a magic wand and pointed it all over the little cardboard city. Boys, he said, look around you. The city was bigger than I thought it was. The raggedy little huts were in every direction you looked, top of 68. And there were more people sitting around than I first thought, too. Mostly it was men and big boys, but there were a couple of women every now and then, and a kid or two. They were all the colors you could think of, black, white, and brown, but the fire made everyone look like they were different shades of orange. There were dark orange folks sitting next to medium orange folks sitting next to light orange folks. All these people, the mouth organ man said, are just like you. They're tired, hungry, and a little bit nervous about tomorrow. This here is the right place for y'all to be because we're all in the same boat and you boys are nearer to home than you'll ever get. Someone said, amen, brother. The mouth organ man said, it don't matter if you're looking for Chicago or Detroit or Orlando or Oklahoma City. I rode the rails to all of them. You might think or you might hear that things are better just down the line, but they're singing the same sad song all over this country. Believe me, son, being on the road is no good. If you two boys are from Flint, this is the right Hooverville for you. Someone said, brother, why don't you feed? Why don't we feed these boys? That one looks like he ain't et in two or three months. Shucks, he didn't have to point or nothing. Everyone knew who he meant. But I didn't care. The food that was bubbling up in those three pots, big pots, even sounded delicious. Top of 69. The mouth organ man said, You're welcome to join us, but we all pitch in here. So unless either of you is carrying one of them smoked West Virginia hams in them bags, it looks like you'll be pulling KP tonight. I said, Pulling what, sir? He said, KP, kitchen police. You do the cleanup after everyone's had their fill. There's a couple other young folks who'll show you what to what you have to do. Me and Bugs both said, yes, sir. This seemed like a real good trade. A woman handed me and Bugs each a flat, square, empty tin can. That, my lords, is your china. Please be careful not to chip it. <laughs> my china had the words jumbo A&P sardines stamped into the bottom of it. She handed us two beat up old spoons and said, don't be shy. You two just about missed supper. You'd better hurry. You best hurry up. She took us over to one of the big pots and filled our tin plates. You're lucky, she said. It's muskrat stew and there's plenty left over tonight. Eat as much as you can. The stew made us made out of dandelion greens and a couple potatoes and some wi small wild carrots and some crawdads and a couple little chunks of meat. It tasted great. We both even got seconds. When we were done, the woman told us, you boys leave your bags here. It's time to do the dishes now. We'll stop there. Continue.